Hey everyone, welcome to another video in Unity 3D where we'll be making a first person shooter. In this video, we're going to set up our gun, well, one of them anyway, and uh, we'll also be looking at how we can get assets from the asset store. So the asset store is right up here. You have your scene, your game, and you'll have an asset store tab. So if you click on that, you're going to have a whole lot of um, options. So in the asset store, you can get things like audio, scripts, uh, 3D and 2D models, sprites, and other tools um, like that, that are more advanced. We're working in 3D, so we're going to click on 3D and we're just going to look for a gun or I don't know, you can use hands if you want to shoot a firebolt or something like that instead. So I'll click on that, I'm just going to scroll down, have a look. Now if I go back up, I'm going to click here on pricing and just click on free assets. So we make sure we're not paying for anything while we're learning. There we go. And we have a low poly FPS pack. I'm just going to click and check that out. Well, this doesn't really match the art style. in our game so far, so I'm not going to choose it, but if you're happy to use this one, feel free. Doesn't really matter what we're learning at the moment. I'm gonna go back. Okay, I'm just gonna use this easy FPS again. Now you don't have to download models from the asset store there are many places online you can download a model from if you do however make sure it either has the dot unity um, the dot 3ds or 3ds max i forgot what the extension is or the dot fbx i'm just going to use this one again i'll download it Okay. Now, once you've downloaded something in the Unity store, you have to then click on import to import the assets into your current game. So here we have a list, it pops up in this window to the left, and import down in this bottom right hand corner, I'm going to click on that. Excellent, so that's downloaded. You can see a new folder here called Easy FPS. I'm gonna open that, just check out some of the things we have. So we have some sounds, um, hit marker, reload, etc. We have some prefabs where you have a player. We won't be using most of these, we're just going to use wherever the weapons are. There we go. We're just going to use the weapons and then we're going to script everything ourselves. So I'm going to go back to my scene up here and I'm going to drag this weapon into my scene. Now, when I drag the weapon into the scene, it, you can see that it's out here. If you have your move tool selected, you'll be able to see that it's going to be nowhere near where your actual player is. So to set it to your player, you can click on it and then just drag it into FPS controller. And what that does is it makes it a child of FPS controller, which means when your FPS controller moves around the map, this will move around with it. If you turn, the gun will turn, etc. Now, Instead of FPS control, I'm going to actually attach it to this one, the first person character. Oops. So you should have FPS controller, which is a parent of first person character, which is the parent of whatever gun model you're using. Now. Excellent. So now if I click on it, it's still far away, but when you make a object so all these here in the 
hierarchy are called objects. When you make the object a child of another object, its positioning and rotation will be relative to that object. So this FPS controller, because it's just in my world, its X, Y, and Z positions are relative to that world. Now that this gun is um, attached to this first person character object, I can set its positions all to zero, right? and zero will be wherever this first person character is. So if I make X five, it's going to be five units to the right of your first person character instead of the center of your world. Okay, so if I click my first person character now, you can see it's highlighted there in the exact same spot. So now you want to zoom in. But you want to select your new gun and you want to raise it and move it to the front of your camera. So in this FPS controller, if you click on it, you can see the camera view over there. You pretty much want that, those arms. Oh, whoops, I moved the wrong thing. Click on the gun and move it lower so that it's in line with that FPS character. So you can see just the tip of the gun here in the camera preview. So that, that means I need to raise this a little bit higher. And I'll do it slightly and I'll just click on it to check it again. Okay, good, but now it's too far in front of the player. So I'll do it here in the inspector just by clicking on this Y. Oops, not Y, Z. Sorry, I didn't have the gun selected. Closer. Okay, we'll actually click on game here so we can see it better. I'll click on game and I'll click on the gun. And then just play around with this character slowly until you have the arms right where you want it to be. Everyone's will be slightly different, but that's what mine looks like so far. Okay, now I'm going to hit play and just test this out. And I've fallen right through my world. Stop that, have a look again. Oh, it's because I've accidentally moved my character. So I'll reset those back to zero. So your FPS controller will have an X, Y, and Z value depending on where you've put it in. Your first person character should be all zero, zero, zero so far. And your new gun will have numbers somewhere between zero and one, maybe even slightly higher than one, depending on the asset you have, so that it's positioned right in front of the camera. Okay, now I'm gonna press play, and that's better. So as you can see, when I turn, the gun turns. If I look up, it looks up. Okay, it doesn't shoot yet, because we haven't taught it to shoot. But I walk around, and you've got the basic First person shooter mechanic working. Now you can see one of my shoulders is still slightly to the front of the camera. So I'm gonna escape and go out of it. Click back in game. And I'm just gonna drag that back slightly. Yeah, it's good enough. Let's test that again. And everything's working. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to come out here and create a simple sphere that we're going to be using to test our shooting with later. Now, to do that, I can right click here in the hierarchy. Sorry, 
right click 3D object I'm going to create a sphere and this sphere is going to be a bullet so up here in the inspector I can rename that game object and I'm going to call this a bullet test right this is just going to be a test bullet we're going to eventually replace it with a real bullet okay so bullet test is over there I'm going to drag this up and just You want to zoom in until you can see it. So it's currently that blue thing. I'm just going to click on my scale tool and drag in from the middle to make it larger. So there you go. That's my bullet. Okay. Now, once you've created that, you want to come here into your assets folder, right click and create a new folder called prefabs. A prefab. Now all a prefab is, is a 3D model, well it doesn't even have to be a 3D model, but a game object with a, all its settings stored. So now that I've dragged that in, right, all its settings over here is currently stored. What do I mean by that? I mean if I now click in, I can drag in unlimited versions of these and they retain all the original settings. If I wanted to get rid of something, so for example, I'm just going to add a random component. You don't need to worry about this for now. But say I add a particle system effect. All right. So that has a particle system effect. And up here, you have settings for your prefab. So I'll apply it now. And now if I click on my prefab, that particle system effect is also in there. All right. Or I can come here in my prefab, remove component. And then if I click back on these, they've been removed as well. So I can pretty much this, sorry. So the prefab is pretty much a template that I can create multiple objects from. So those are my two test spheres. Um, that will be a bullet. And I'll leave that as is for now. And in the next video, we'll get our gun shooting.